In this video, we'll run through the changes that were introduced by Capture One in their version 21.1 release. Now, this is a midterm release or an interim release, which means for any perpetual license owners of version 21 or for those on the subscription plan, this is, of course, free for you to download and you'll find it available in your account on CaptureOne.com. Now, before we delve into some of the new features and interface changes that have happened, let's talk about what's happened behind the scenes with camera support. In this version, you'll find support for Sony's A1 as well as Fuji's GFX100S camera. But you'll also, if you're a Leica SL or S series user, find there's new live view support with full pan and zoom control within the application. Also, you'll find brand new Pro Standard profiles. They've been expanded to include eight new models from Canon, four models from Nikon, and even my old uh, Phase 1 IQ3 has now got the Pro Standard treatment done to it too. So let's take a look at the interface changes that have happened, the ones that are most obvious to your existing workflow. The first we'll touch on is magnification and zoom. Now, in Capture One, you've always been able to zoom in to be able to do some detailed work, but it's always topped out at 400%. Now, on a standard monitor at standard resolution, that's plenty to be able to do this sort of close-up work. But if you're on a high-resolution image on a high-resolution monitor that's a large physical size, sometimes it's just not enough to be able to get into the detail. So in 21.1, this magnification of 400% has been pushed up to 1600% at maximum. Now, on this monitor, that might look a little bit extreme, but I can assure you when you're using a much larger scale screen, this really does help to get that detail and those final adjustments right on track. Moving on, let's talk about a tool that's very key to uh, or close to my heart, which is the Keystone tool. Now the Keystone tool itself hasn't changed in terms of functionality. It's the same tool that was there in 21 and in 20 and beyond. What has changed is the way that we control the perspective lines. One of the biggest complaints I'd hear from people when using the Keystone tool was that they couldn't find these lines or these anchor points, especially against a busy background or maybe even a gray sky. So while the tool itself hasn't changed in terms of its functionality, what has changed is the ease in which you can place these lines against buildings and details and hit the apply button. As I say, it's the same result, but it's just easier to use. So moving on, let's look at one of the tools that has changed quite a lot in 21.1, which is the new import dialog. Now, those of you that took on version 21 will remember this was quite extensively re-engineered for 21 in terms of speed and processing. It was also changed in terms of some of the wording that was used in some of these boxes. The selection tool was made a lot easier. We can pick all and unpick with the space bar if we want to. But one issue still remained. And that was if you didn't want to bring in all of your images into Capture One in order to make your decisions as to which ones to keep, you had to make your decisions using a relatively small picture. So I could zoom in, obviously, into the browser, but making a decision between two images from left to right without enough detail was actually a really difficult challenge. So in 21.1, there's a new addition of a function on the top, which is called Viewer. Now, the Viewer can be accessed by either clicking this icon, pressing the G key on the keyboard, which enables it and disables it, or I can just go into any picture and double-click. Once I'm in the viewer, the selected image I've got comes up big in this screen here, and it stays in the middle of the browser on the right-hand side. So as I use my cursor keys to switch between different images, it keeps the middle one as the one that I'm viewing the larger preview of. Now, these previews actually come from the camera manufacturer, not from Capture One, so they're not built by Capture One. Capture One is reading them from the raw file, and it's the embedded preview that gets stuck in there. What that does mean is you might find that depending on your camera manufacturer, this preview is clearer or less clear based on what they're saving. Just like before, from within this viewer, as well as the browser, we can go through and we can use the space bar to select and unselect. But we also now have access to the A and the S key to unselect or deselect and select images that we want to import. Now, in my head, I've renamed these as abandon and save, but that's up to you. The reason they're chosen is because they're next to each other on the left-hand side of the keyboard and you've got the cursor keys to the right. So I can very quickly go through and make my selections using that A key and S key, and then come back to my browser if I want to. Or, these are obviously all stored, whether I'm in the viewer or the browser, from that point, choose which images to import. So once we've imported all of our images, whenever I go into an image and I want to adjust a mask or paint a mask on, I obviously have my brush controls, and these have been enhanced over time with, uh, with keyboard shortcuts and the ability to control the uh, brush with your mouse. But here's the problem. Let's imagine I've got this uh, layer here, which is my ocean layer. And on my ocean layer, I want to increase some saturation, lift up some shadows. Uh, that's probably about it in there. Well, I might want a very, very big brush for this, quite a lot of uh, flow and opacity. And I start painting on 
this mask. Now, obviously we're overdoing things for the demo purposes, but you get the idea. So a very, very wide brush, very, very soft edge. Now I'm gonna create a new layer. And this layer is gonna be called the cliff layer. So let's just actually call it cliffs. And this layer is designed to bring out a lot more detail in these cliffs. So on this layer, I'm gonna increase some exposure. I'm going to increase some of the highlight. I'm gonna certainly increase the clarity on there. Might even put in a little bit of dehaze. Uh, let's put up some contrast as well. And I move on to my brush. But my brush now is set as the same size as my ocean layer. So I'm gonna make a change. I'm gonna make a much smaller brush, probably with a harder edge, so I've got more control. Flow and opacity is fine, and I'm gonna start painting in. Now again, purely for demo purposes. So when I'm finished with that layer there, I may think, actually, I wanna go back and change some of that ocean edit there as well. So let's go back to my ocean and start painting. But again, I'm stuck with that brush that I last used. So between these two layers, I might want very different brushes based on the task that I'm trying to achieve. Well, the good news in 21.1 is that issue has been addressed. So if I right click here in my screen, I now have the option here to link brush with layer. I still have the option to link the eraser with the brush. So in other words, make sure the eraser on each layer is the same size as the brush or heel or clone. But this is the important one, linking brush with layer. When I do that, it recognizes that on this layer, I want a 60 size brush, 59 hardness, 100, 100. But when I switch back to my ocean layer, I may now want a much bigger brush with a soft hardness instead. So I can continue to brush there. When I go back to cliffs, I'm back to my small brush. Back to ocean, I'm back to my big brush. So this can be as relevant as well for like portrait photographers. So maybe I want a quite a soft, wide dodge and burn brush, um, maybe even with a low flow. But then when it comes to skin smoothing, I might want a very detailed brush or maybe even clarity on eyebrows or eyelashes or something like that. So depending on the layer that I'm working on, I can now have an individual brush that is linked to the layer and the layer remembers it. That to me changes a big way of working um, when it comes to editing and is certainly a time saver from my perspective. So while we're talking about brushes, let's move on to the main event, I guess, which is style brushes. So out of the box, Capture One now includes these default built-in style brushes, which are basically quick ways to access one or more tools. So let's take a look at one of them as standard. If you can't find the style brushes um, panel in your tools, it's probably because you've got a custom workspace, but it doesn't matter at any point, you can always click on any of these three dots, go to add tool and you'll find style brushes at the bottom. If you do add it this way, you might find that style brushes has actually been added to the bottom of your tools down here. You might wanna bring it up, but here it is um, as default in the default workspace. So let's say I want to play with um, maybe enhancements, deep sky. Now look at that, my brush changed. And the reason is because on style brushes, it's also making use of that link brush to layer function. Now deep sky might be making some changes. So as I start clicking around this image, well, it certainly deepened the sky. It's done what it said on the tin. And we can see actually what that style brush has done. It's made a contrast change. It's reduced some highlights. It's increased some whites and increased some clarity. So, this is a brush now that's created its own layer automatically as I started doing it called Deep Sky. Let's go to another style brush, maybe Burn in this case. Different brush size, again, because it's linked to the layer. And in this case, what you'll see is things like Flow on a lot of these brushes are decidedly low compared to what you might use normally. The reason for that is because Capture One wanted all the default brushes to be allowed to be used very sensitively. Um, and then you can change things if you really want to and ramp them up. So let's increase the Flow for now. And I'm going to use this darken brush to darken the sky way over the top. Now you can see again, it's created another layer on this left hand side called burn darken. And here's the clever bit. If I go back to my deep sky layer and start painting, it automatically goes back to the deep sky layer and keeps it going. If for any reason you wanted maybe two layers of the same type of style brush, very easy to do. Just right click on the style brush and instead of just starting to paint, click on use on new layer. It'll create a second, in this case, deep sky layer to allow you to double up if you really wanna go over the top. Okay, so let's turn that one off and let's just think about customizing this because actually the style brushes themselves, they're a great tool. They're a, they're a very easy way of being able to make changes to more than one tool at the same time. But in a certain way, that was no different to styles. 
we always had styles in Capture One for a long, long time, and you were able to obviously apply certain effects across the whole image. We could right click and apply it to a new layer, and you could brush that in or out. But these were very much a big sledgehammer to crack a very small nut. What Style Brushes allows us to do is to create a repeatable set of tool and adjustment changes that I can move between images. So let's say I want to create my own style brush. Let's load up a different picture here. So this shot from Yosemite. And let's say I want to do some work on the sky and there isn't a built-in one that's suitable for what I want. So all I'm going to do, create a new layer. It can be empty or filled. It doesn't matter. In this case, I'm going to fill it so I can see what's happening. And I'm going to then, let's say, let's increase some saturation a touch. Let's reduce our highlights. Let's lift some shadows a bit and let's put in a bit of contrast. I might also want to put in some dehaze just for good measure. So I've touched one, two, three, four different tools in one go. Now to create the style brush from that, I can either right click on the layer and say save adjustments as style brush, or I can just go into my style brushes tab, click on the three dots and go to save style brush. And it will take whatever layer I've selected as the combination. It will also, not only will it flag any things that I've changed in that layer, it will also allow me to save the brush settings that I've used if I'd set them for that layer as well. So in this case, let's save it. And I'll call it Dramatic Sky. So let's turn the layer off. Under my custom style brushes now, I'll find my style brush called Dramatic Sky. And just like with any other style brush, I can now go in and start painting. And just like the other style brushes, Capture One has created a new layer for my Dramatic Sky. I can go on to any other image. So let's go on to our Iceland shot. And I could use that dramatic sky, maybe not on the sky. We could use it on the rocks very badly. <laughs> but again, it's going to carry across that style brush name, create a new layer on the top left in my layers, and I can carry on using it as if I was on the original image. Now, there are two things to be very careful of with these style brushes, which I'm going to just flag for you now. The first is with white balance. So within Capture One, if you have a look in the built-in style brushes, you'll see one under color called Balance Cool or Balance Warm. Let's use Balance Warm. And let's just paint in here. And we can see that it's slightly warming up these mountains in Yosemite as I paint. So if I turn that off and on, we can see the difference. But it's not doing it through white balance. It's actually doing it through the color balance tool and it's shifting the midtones to be warm or cool in the case of the cooling filter. The reason is because white balance is taken as an absolute. So if I save this in a style brush and be very careful with this, it will take the exact amount of white balance and copy it across. Let's take this existing balance warm change. In fact, no, let's go to our dramatic sky and I'm going to increase our white balance by, let's say, 4000. Okay. We're going to save this as a brand new style brush. So up here, save style brush. And in this one, I'm going to make sure that we've got the white balance selected. Go to save, saves everything else. And we'll call it WB Dramatic Sky. And you'll see it sit here in our custom style brushes. So this sky went pretty yellowy green. Fine. Let's go up to our old image of Kuala Lumpur. Choose WB Dramatic Sky and start painting. Now, obviously, this isn't the same color or white balance as what we saw before. And the reason is because it has taken the literal white balance, the literal Kelvin amount, not a relative amount. So it hasn't increased the white balance by 4000. It has literally just taken the exact white balance value from the style brush. Now, this also applies to the dehaze function when it comes to saving as a style brush. If I create a new layer and set the dehaze amount, when I go to save that as a style brush, it will carry that amount across to any other image, but it will leave the shadow tone as auto. If I choose an actual dehaze shadow tone, a manual dehaze shadow tone, and save this as a style brush, what will happen is if I select this tick box here to say shadow tone, it will literally take this exact shadow tone that I selected, this dark blue, across to any other picture that I use it on, not the auto setting. So for white balance and dehaze, be very careful when using them in a style brush because it can be a literal translation from one image to the other, whereas all others tend to be relative. 
Now, some of you may have noticed that in my custom style brushes, I've got these folders in here. It's not just one big dumping ground for all of the custom style brushes that are made. If you ever need to delete a style brush, you can just right click on that brush and say delete style brush. It'll ask you to confirm and off you go. Unfortunately, in 21.1, there's no way within Capture One to organize your style brushes in the same way as the built in ones. But what you can do is do it through the file system. So on a Mac, if you go into your uh, library, your user library, into application support, into Capture One, and then style brushes as a folder, you'll find all of the style brushes you've saved are sat in there. If you create a new folder, you move the style brushes into there. When you restart Capture One, you'll find that structure is mimicked here on the left hand side. On Windows, it's actually in the app data folder, so it's your username and then app data, and then you can find the way down through application support into Capture One. And in there again, you'll find a style brushes folder. So style brushes themselves, if you take the defaults that are there from Capture One, these things may save you some time, but typically they're just an amalgamation of tools that you already know. The power in style brushes is not only can you create your own varieties and recipes of different styles that help you with your style of editing, but I can also pick up all these style brushes at a folder level and I can share them and hand them around. So if I have someone editing photos for me, I can hand them a style brush. If you haven't handed someone one of those brushes, don't worry. If you send someone a file that's got a style brush being used in it, all that Capture One's going to do is give you a, a layer with the name of the style brush with all of those settings already applied in there. So it's completely transferable, it's completely compatible across different versions of Capture One. But if you choose, you can create these style brushes which give you your editing style for your style of photo. You can save them as a backup and use them on other systems, or if you wanted to upgrade in future, keep a backup as a good handy hint. But more importantly, these are great ways of sharing editing between different users. So 21.1 is an interim release, as we said. It's got a lot more camera support in there. We've expanded the pro standard profiles to go across to many more different cameras. Magnification and zoom has improved. The Keystone tool has improved as well. That's made things a lot, lot easier. But on top of that, we've now got the new import viewer. We also have brush linking, which is a real game changer in terms of editing, being able to have different sizes of brush and remember them for different layers that are doing different things. And on top of that, we've got the brand new style brushes function, which allows us to join up lots of tools, save them as presets and apply them selectively to whatever image you choose. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an overview of everything that's included. And of course, I look forward to seeing what you create with the new tools as well.